Mindset and Emotions Learn how to use your mind to control your feelings. Table of Contents Introduction Chapter 1 The Relationship Between the Mind and Your Feelings Chapter 2 What You Should Know About the Emotions Chapter 3 The Interaction Between the Mind and the Emotions Chapter 4 The Power of the Mind Chapter 5 Take Charge 10 Ways to Take Absolute Control of Your Mind Chapter 6 Unlocking Your Mind Power Chapter 7 Controlling Your Feelings Chapter 8 The Role of the Mind in Controlling Your Feelings Chapter 9 Controlling Your Feelings with the Mind Learning the Art Chapter 10 Using the mind control to check your feelings. Conclusion Introduction Can the mind really control emotions? The human emotion is a very influential force in our makeup. This ever-present force can be both helpful and painful to us. We experience different situations daily as humans. Whether we are taking an early morning walk, trying to win a new client over at work, just received a piece of news worth celebrating or taking a financial hit or even the death of a loved one. These situations bring about different reactions when they take place. This is aided by the release of neurotransmitters. Feelings or emotions are triggered responses to situations. They are naturally linked to our flight or fight instincts that are inborn. We cry whenever we feel pain. We make sacrifices for love and take chances as a result of optimism over a prospect we envisage. As different situations produce different reactions, it is ideal to expect both sides of the coin. We react differently to the situations we experience, either in a proper manner or out of line. This can prove to be costly both to ourselves and our relationship with others. Reacting well to situations is undoubtedly beneficial and cannot be simply overlooked. The conscious and subconscious are two levels of our thought process, i.e. the mind. The latter has been researched to be more aware than the former. Its capacity to retain information from our senses, which are the centers of taking in information, is extremely high. Data from the five sense organs are seamlessly captured and stored by the subconscious mind. As influential as this level of the mind is in the projection of emotions, it is rarely accessed. To have control of the one's feelings, it is imperative to ask the subconscious as well as the surface conscious part of the mind. You will go on to learn how to do so as you read on. Generally, the control means influencing something or having a measure of power over it. Control in this context is a learned skill. It refers to the ability to discipline thoughts, feelings, and emotions as it does not come naturally. Control must be learned. So how do you control your feelings using the mind? Knowledge is power. It brings about control. To learn to control one's feelings with the mind is important. As a matter of fact, to understand the different concepts surrounding the mind and the human feelings. You will be in a better position to control your feelings and emotions after gaining this knowledge. This book goes on to highlight key areas that will help any individual applying its method to go on to achieve total control of the emotions. It discusses the mind and emotions, their relationship, and how they work in tandem. Our feelings can alternate between volatile extremes. When it is steered extremely to the right, we find ourselves in a state of euphoria, and when it veers extremely to the left, it borders on rage. Love, ecstasy, excitement are examples of positive feelings which should be encouraged. Rage, bitterness, hate, envy are some negative emotions which can spiral uncontrollably when triggered, hence leading to havoc. To attain moderation, putting things in the right perspective and handling negative emotions to the best degree Control is a must. To learn how to use the mind to control your feelings, it is important to first understand the mind and how feelings work. The next chapter brings this to the fore.
Mindset and Emotions Learn how to use your mind to control your feelings. Table of Contents Introduction Chapter 1 The Relationship Between the Mind and Your Feelings Chapter 2 What You Should Know About the Emotions Chapter 3 The Interaction Between the Mind and the Emotions Chapter 4 The Power of the Mind Chapter 5. Take Charge. Ten Ways to Take Absolute Control of Your Mind. Chapter 6. Unlocking Your Mind Power. Chapter 7. Controlling Your Feelings. Chapter 8. The Role of the Mind in Controlling Your Feelings. Chapter 9. Controlling Your Feelings with the Mind. Learning the Art. Chapter 10. Using the mind control to check your feelings. Conclusion Introduction Can the mind really control emotions? The human emotion is a very influential force in our makeup. This ever-present force can be both helpful and painful to us. We experience different situations daily as humans. Whether we are taking an early morning walk, trying to win a new client over at work, just received a piece of news worth celebrating or taking a financial hit, or even the death of a loved one. These situations bring about different reactions when they take place. This is aided by the release of neurotransmitters. Feelings or emotions are triggered responses to situations. They are naturally linked to our flight or fight instincts that are inborn. We cry whenever we feel pain, we make sacrifices for love and take chances as a result of optimism over a prospect we envisage. As different situations produce different reactions, it is ideal to expect both sides of the coin. We react differently to the situations we experience, either in a proper manner or out of line. This can prove to be costly both to ourselves and our relationship with others. Reacting well to situations is undoubtedly beneficial and cannot be simply overlooked. The conscious and subconscious are two levels of our thought process, i.e. the mind. The latter has been researched to be more aware than the former. Its capacity to retain information from our senses, which are the centers of taking in information, is extremely high. Data from the five sense organs are seamlessly captured and stored by the subconscious mind. As influential as this level of the mind is in the projection of emotions, it is rarely accessed. To have control of the one's feelings, it is imperative to ask the subconscious as well as the surface conscious part of the mind. You will go on to learn how to do so as you read on. Generally, the control means influencing something or having a measure of power over it. Control in this context is a learned skill. It refers to the ability to discipline thoughts, feelings, and emotions as it does not come naturally. Control must be learned. So how do you control your feelings using the mind? Knowledge is power. It brings about control. To learn to control one's feelings with the mind is important. As a matter of fact, to understand the different concepts surrounding the mind and the human feelings. You will be in a better position to control your feelings and emotions after gaining this knowledge. This book goes on to highlight key areas that will help any individual applying its method to go on to achieve total control of the emotions. It discusses the mind and emotions, their relationship, and how they work in tandem. Our feelings can alternate between volatile extremes. When it is steered extremely to the right, we find ourselves in a state of euphoria, and when it veers extremely to the left, it borders on rage. Love, ecstasy, excitement are examples of positive feelings which should be encouraged. Rage, bitterness, hate, envy are some negative emotions which can spiral uncontrollably when triggered, hence leading to havoc. To attain moderation, putting things in the right perspective and handling negative emotions to the best degree Control is a must. To learn how to use the mind to control your feelings, it is important to first understand the mind and how feelings work. The next chapter brings this to the fore.
Chapter 1. The Relationship Between the Mind and Your Feelings Philosophers and scientists have strived to grasp the full workings of the mind and feelings for ages. Different theories have been proposed to discuss the workings of the mind, how it is interconnected with emotions and feelings. It may be surprising to see emotions and feelings mentioned apart. No need to worry. It will be fully explained in the second section of this part. An indisputable point that will form the underlying theme of this section is that the mind, feelings, and emotions are all mental states that affect our actions in speech or deed. It goes as far as affecting our creativity or the curtailing of it. To know how to make the most of your situation and manage the ups and downs, the relationship of the mind and your feelings need to be understood. This section discusses the mind and feelings independently. It further goes on to relate them in a bid to help you learn to take charge of your feelings using the mind. When an individual is asked to recount a deep and painful experience, some parts of it may well be recollected, but not all. Why is this so? What houses such repressed mental contents, and do they influence our actions? You will be primed to find out the answers to these questions when you fully understand the working of the mind. Improved self-worth, reduced emotional upheaval, and a better position to attain goals in life are some benefits associated with gaining control of the mind. Knowledge of the mind is the first step needed in controlling it. So what exactly do you need to know about the mind? 1.1. One one. What you should know about the mind. The first step to changing your world is changing your mindset. How can you go about changing your mindset if you do not even understand how the mind basically works and why there is a need to take charge of it and change it? One of the most complex things in the universe is the human brain. You do not need to be a philosopher, neuroscientist, or brain surgeon to care about how it performs its functions. The brain can be likened to a self-operating computer in the human skull, controlling all our activities. Similar to a computer's hardware, it consists of memory, power connections, processing power, storage, and wiring, which are all needed in carrying out our daily human tasks. The computer is made of both hardware and software. Just as the brain has been compared to the hardware components of a computer system, the mind pictures the software part. It functions as the operating system, gathering, managing, and storing information. It uses the brain's resources to process data. As the computer system is inoperable when the hardware and software components are separated from each other, this also applies to the brain and mind. They make up the same entity and cannot operate in isolation. About 100 billion neurons, or nerve cells, found in the human brain forms the central nervous system, CNS. These nerve cells receive and transmit electrochemical signals. These signals are your emotions, thoughts, actions, and the reflexes undergone by the body. It is the mind that generates the thought that remains a fact in the midst of all the ongoing research surrounding it. Consciousness. The mind is not something outside that can be pinpointed. It is not an object. It is invisible but not is the same category as force fields such as electricity and gravity. From its physical effects, we can infer its existence just like those of the force fields given as instances above. It is only different from these force fields in that it can be directly perceived through feelings, thoughts, and memories. We can only experience our own minds on a personal basis. The mind is made up of different layers of consciousness. The conscious mind, the subconscious, and the unconscious mind. In total, the mind's operational power has been researched to be made up of less than 10% of the conscious mind. Scientists have also attributed the conscious mind to be responsible for collecting data, accessing the collected data, and processing it making comparisons and finding patterns, decision-making, thought processing before making knee-jerk reactions, and the control of short-span memory. The conscious mind is a host of deliberate thoughts and awareness. 
The subconscious mind makes up the part of the mind that stores information continually, giving out reactions that are based on past experiences and emotions associated with a person, place, or thing. Contrary to popular belief, it is the subconscious that projects the inner feelings and responses while the conscious draws in one's reins. The subconscious takes about 50 to 60 percent of the mind. It is that part of the mind that holds information, as powerful as they can be, but approachable. It is responsible for the running of the body such as sleeping, breathing, temperature control, heart rate, control of body parts just to mention a few. It is the seat of emotion where creativity and imagination are produced. Habits are also formed and maintained by the layer of the mind. What then is the unconscious mind? Usually used synonymously in place of the subconscious, both terms are, in fact, different from one another. Why then the confusion between both terms, one might ask? One reason is the understanding of the medical term unconscious which refers to a blackout state. The confusion also arises partly as a result of their interchangeable word usage, which is incorrect. Scientists have attempted explaining this part of the mind as the mental area where loathsome feelings, thoughts, memories, and ideas are repressed. These contents are capable of making the individual sick and are unaccepted to the conscious mind majorly because of their alarming nature. With time, more light has been shed on the contents housed by the unconscious mind. It has been discovered that these mental contents are not necessarily evil, but they are very powerful to be contained in the conscious mind. A little prodding will not bring them to the surface, unlike those found in the subconscious. The intriguing plot to this part of our consciousness is that in spite of it being rejected, it is not entirely discarded. It goes on to influence our actions and reactions to situations, though on a subliminal level. Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist, went on to divide the unconscious mind into two layers. The personal unconscious, a part of the unconscious where formerly conscious mental contents are subdued forcefully. Another part of the unconscious that consists of experiences and genetic pieces of information which have been accumulated over the years is termed as the collective unconscious. Accessibility remains the major difference between the subconscious and the unconscious mind. This implies that the mental contents in the subconscious mind can be recalled when attention is brought to it. Unlike the subconscious, the unconscious mind requires specific techniques to retrieve repressed memories. These psychoanalytical methods are largely effective in retrieving mental contents from the unconscious mind. We sometimes recall information that is needed at the time or not. For instance, our home address. The subconscious mind is responsible for this. It plays out what it has been fed with never acting independently, and so can be said to be purely instinctual. The unconscious is not fed. Traumatic memories, depressing thoughts, and alarming experiences are stored in this layer of the mind automatically. Both layers of the mind influence our actions. If we feed our subconscious with falsehood, we act in line with what we have fed it with. Meanwhile, our unconscious controls our decisions and behaviors based on thoughts and past events, unknown to our conscious self. This is how the different sections of the mind work in harmony. Our consciousness can once again be compared to a computer. The conscious mind can be represented by both input and output devices, such as the mouse or keyboard and a monitor. The keyboard is used in inputting data, which is displayed on the screen of the monitor. The conscious mind takes in information from our surrounding through our senses and immediately the results show up in our consciousness. The subconscious functions as a computer's RAM, where data and programs that are being used at the time are kept, in order to be easily accessed by the computer's processor. Recent memories are stored up in the subconscious for a quick recollection, like your home address, mentioned earlier, or the name of someone you met a few moments back. Daily routines and reoccurring thought processes, habits, behavioral patterns, and feelings are stored here. 
The unconscious mind is the site for long-term storage of all programs or memories in this context since the time of birth. Both the unconscious and the subconscious mind gets an understanding of the world using all these memories found in the unconscious. The sense made out of these memories ensures we are kept safe and we survive varying circumstances. These two mind sections function on the logic that if something worked for you in the past, it will do so over and over again using the same process. This is regardless of how painful, misguided, and unhelpful the result is to your existence to the world outside. What then about your feelings and emotions? Chapter 2. What you should know about the emotions. Feelings and emotions are also two terms that are used interchangeably to mean how we feel about someone or something. As a matter of fact, they both mean different things. Although they are distinct terms, we need to view them to relate closely to one another. They can be seen as opposite sides of a single coin. How so? It is best to explain what emotions as they serve as precursors to feelings. Technically, emotions are those reactions caused by neurons in response to emotional stimuli. These responses create electrical and biological reactions which alter the physical state of the body. Emotions are created in the brain's neocortex and subcortical regions. This is the limbic system. The neocortex is associated with reasoning, conscious thoughts, and making decisions. The amygdala of the limbic system regulates the release of neurons, which consolidates memories. This is a key role in the arousal of emotions, and it is the reason why emotional memories are seen to be long-lasting and stronger. Feelings originate in the brain's neocortical region. They are caused by emotions and shaped by the memories, experiences, thoughts, and beliefs of a person linked to a particular emotion. As a matter of fact, it is the side product of the processing of emotion by the brain and ascribing meaning to the emotion. Emotions are instinctive and physical, prompting instant body reactions to rewards, threats, or any factor lingering with both borders. Such reactions of the body can be objectively measured using facial expressions, heart rate, pupil dilation, brain activity, and skin conductance. Emotional reactions are deeply genetically rooted and hard-coded. Although emotions slightly vary as a result of circumstances from different individuals, they are universal and very similar across every human on Earth. Feelings have a very conscious nature, which makes them easily measurable. Surveys, interviews, questionnaires, procedures for self-assessment, and rating scales are all self-reporting tools employed in the measurement of feelings. When unexpected or unpredicted things occur, feelings make us aware that they are happening. It demands work from the mind. The work in this context is thinking. Handling feelings requires thinking or thoughts. It should be noted that feelings come first, followed by thoughts, which create solutions to handling feelings. Thinking are born out of experience and learning. It does not come naturally as feelings do. That is why a little child at birth has no thought to relate with. Rather, this creature is bundled up with feelings. Thinking is developed gradually through the years enabling us to handle our feelings the more, solving whatever problem our feelings present along the line. Once there is an existence of a mature thinking process exists, feelings can be made to come second after thinking. For instance, a developed thought with a respect to a certain feeling can be rethought. If it is a thought that has been mastered like a problem-solving procedure, it can reactivate a certain feeling, making the feeling come second. This is a derivative process. Thought are distinct from feelings. It can be described as a space of virtuality where we can solve, in the space of our minds, what we have to do in reality before putting our solutions to practice. 
In fact, thoughts come in between our feelings and the actions we take. Quite importantly is the fact that our thoughts and actions overlap each other. One of such effects is the avoidance of certain circumstances because of the feelings associated with them. We might avoid walking through the edge of a cliff because we might get queasy from the fear of falling. That is the work being performed by our thoughts. It directs our actions on do's and don'ts with regards to the feeling we get from our virtual minds. This is a means by which a phobia can be developed. In addition to the problems we solve, that is, our thought processes, which are based on what we have learned, our past encounters and experiences lie something more. We have certain solutions with biological significance on a universal scale that are inbuilt. These are solutions to problems that we do not learn from experience. These solutions are known as instincts. It is an instinct that will prevent us from jumping from a height as the experience from doing so might be our very last. There are numerous problems world over that pure instincts just can't predict. So we need the experience to learn from. In doing so, we elaborate and extend our instinct to help us cope with reality in varying situations. Hence, thinking is not only interposed between feelings and actions, but it comes between reflexes or automatic responses and instinctual feelings generating it. Generally speaking, we develop our thoughts to manage the needs that feelings present in multiple ways than is being provided by our pure instincts. Thinking is a refined product of instinct. Chapter 3. The Interaction Between the Mind and the Emotions Knowing how our minds work is part of the greatest mysteries we are yet to solve. A lot of individuals have dedicated their entire lives to understanding the mind, sadly, to no avail. Understanding the roles of our mind and emotions to our well-being is paramount as it puts us in the driving seat in controlling our lives. This is simply a little part in our quest to use the mind in controlling our feelings, but is one that must not be neglected. Similar to the relationship held by every part of our entire makeup, ignoring the interactions between our minds, emotions, thoughts, and feelings means we will be ignoring their roles. On a more serious note, this might be an aspect that we need to get fixed before taking further steps. There is an ever-dynamic and intimate relationship between our feelings, thoughts, and the things taking place in our body. Health-wise, this is essential as optimism, hopefulness, contentment, and happiness have been observed to limit the severe effects of pulmonary and cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, diabetes, infections to the upper respiratory organs, and cold. This is in contrast to the effect of depression, which worsens a host of illnesses, including diabetes and heart diseases. Medicine and health procedures have gone a long way in helping persons from the claws of sickness and accidents. Notwithstanding, our mind and emotions hold a greater sway as to how we will adjust and relate to our surrounding. It holds the key in bouncing back from such ordeals in many instances. Fear, a basic emotion, has been described to be an abstract feeling. It is further identified as a product of the adrenaline hormone, which is a tangible molecule. This basically infers that the feelings would not exist the hormone, and the hormone, conversely, does not exist without the feeling. This simple discovery has led to a revolution in conventional medicine known as mind-body medicine. The mind and body do not function independently. They are not separate systems, and this can be observed when we are tensed. An instance of a moment of nervousness is a job interview or a first date with our longtime crush. Regardless of how calm and confident we would like to appear in such instances, we discover that we are both tensed and self-conscious at the same time. The muscles of our buttocks will be tightened as a result of the self-conscious feeling we are experiencing. We sweat more than usual and might even feel nauseous in such events, not forgetting those periods we would fluff our lines when we desire or attempt to be confident. 
All these points sum up the fact that we are physically affected by our emotions. Understanding that our heart beats faster when we are scared is easier than the realization of sadness. When we feel lonely, depressed, or sad, we can also get affected physically. And when this situation gets more complex, such as instances of sickness, very few of us give thought to our emotions. We do not even consider the fact that it has a role to play. Understanding the workings of our minds and our physical self would not necessarily eliminate or cure all our struggles, but it will influence our well-being. How is this so, you may wonder? Understanding how the mind works in tandem with the emotions is like learning a language. This language will help us know what is being ignored or repressed by our body and what is not. When we do so, we will be in a better position to make positive decisions in the right direction. Our emotions, which are constructed by the subconscious and highly influenced by the unconscious layer of our mind, is what adds value to our thoughts. For instance, let us say you were raised to believe that tipping a salt shaker over is a sign of bad luck. When you observe someone tipping a salt shaker unintentionally or do so yourself, your mind sends thoughts which project emotions. The information being relayed identifies a salt shaker and a tip-off, which links it to the topic of bad luck and everything else associated with it. This bad luck belief produces an uneasy feeling. To someone who has not raised up to believe that tipping off salt shakers results in bad luck, such person might not even notice that the salt shaker was tipped off in the first place and the reaction and feelings produced will differ greatly. So, information and thoughts are shaped based on paradigm and beliefs. These are closely linked to emotions, which produce feelings. The mind without emotion is useless, and emotions are dependent on the workings of the mind. Chapter 4. The Power of the Mind Every problem we have ever encountered and the solutions we conjure is a product of our mind. Every thought and feeling, excitement and worry is our mind's product. It can be our confidant or our foe. It can be a ruthless master or a loyal slave. It is that powerful. The mind is brilliant and quite unexplainable. We can describe it as a pilot if we were to be a plane. This pilot is unique, that words fail in describing its uniqueness. It discovers itself through research, finding and fixing flaws. As we cannot do without our minds, it is our responsibility to coexist, work with, and be in charge. It is normal to pay less attention to your thoughts. We all do so. These thoughts begin and get through our minds, never to come up again. We do forget that they even exist because they are immaterial. Hence, we underestimate their powerful effects on our lives. Nonetheless, the human mind is very potent, wielding a very strong power which is available for our use. Sad as it may be, most individuals are not aware of its power, and a large percentage of those who know about its effect simply choose to ignore it. The power possessed by the mind largely depends on our thoughts. These thoughts influence our lives to a very large extent. Our attitudes, beliefs, and mindset affect our behaviors and response to different situations. Our thoughts can be the difference between living an awesome life and a miserable one. An amazing life whereby we encounter challenges that teaches us vital lessons or one in which we are positioned against the world. This is purely based on the power of the mind, as two individuals might encounter the same experience, but with different outcomes. The way they interpret and react to the situations determines the outcome. Understanding the power of the mind, knowing how to control it, and taking complete charge of it is essential in deciding the outcome of our lives. It will decide whether we end up happy or sad with the challenges we face and find solutions to. We must bear this in mind. Also, to effect change on the world, we must change not only ourselves, but our thoughts. 
why you need to take complete control of your mind. Whoever controls his mind controls his life. To implement worthwhile changes to your life, you must first take charge of the inner world. The challenges we encounter externally will rarely be altered except the internal ones are addressed. Looking through the society, we can observe a lot of individuals spiraling out of control. They seem to be clueless as to how they can control their lives. As a matter of fact, they have lost touch with their minds. It would not be out of place to ask such persons if they are out of their minds, whenever they act without control. The blame game never seems to end as a result of lack of control. From the leaders at the top of the government to the everyday individuals on the street, Everyone keeps passing the blame on to the next. No one ever wants to accept the responsibilities of the ongoing in their lives. The overall effect has been escalated from private lives to the world at large. No wonder the world is rumpled of a mess. Its institutions are messy, and their messiness keeps advancing at alarmingly high rates, as no one would step forward and take responsibility. Sadly, those that do come out are clueless as where to start implementing change from, and the vicious cycle goes on. To enact such global changes, every member of society has to look within and start taking responsibilities in our personal lives. Even though we cannot control the factors and situations around us, or even what people do, we can still control our mind. This involves controlling our thinking, the beliefs held by us, words spoken, actions taken, the images in our minds, our attitudes, and emotions. When these listed factors are controlled, we can achieve anything we want. You might be puzzled as to how this is so. This is the reason. Around our existence lies energy. From the mountains to buildings, in your streets, stars, oceans, right through the solar system, we can find energy. Also, around our existence, such as our minds and bodies, we can find energy. We harness this energy such that our feeling, at a point in time, influences the result of our actions. Things seem to work out smoothly when you put on the air of confidence. The reverse happens when you are feeling down. This is positive and negative energy playing out respectively. Positive thoughts attract positive outcomes, while negative thoughts draw negative results to itself. This concept is widely known as the law of attraction. Similar things attract each other. Our mind is an agent of attraction. It is like a magnet attracting things to itself. Unlike the way a magnet will naturally function, attracting unlike poles, the mind works the other way around. It is responsible for all the things we experience in life. When your mind is not controlled by you, you feel victimized. You point fingers to other persons playing the blame game. Persons who have their minds in their control know they have the power to do so and ensure they maintain the standard. Rather than neglecting their thoughts, actions, speech, beliefs, attitude, emotions, and images playing through their minds, they pay keen attention to them. They realize that the losing control of their mind for a little while might be catastrophic, resulting in harm, regardless of the scale. Negative thoughts should never be allowed. The silent voice in your head, whispering negative ideas to you, making your heart pound anxiously, yielding more frightening scenes, vicious visions that just won't be erased. These unpleasant thoughts do not just scare but they result in anxiety, destroying whatever happy feelings left behind. Negative feelings begin with a simple line of thought that expands into something overwhelming. It starts as a spark beside a gasoline tank, consuming everything around, spiraling out of control more often than not. It is a joy killer that should not be started in the first place, leading to all sorts of health issues eventually. Unfortunately, negative feelings cannot be stopped. Thanks to mind control, we can decide how long we allow them to last in our heads. Controlling your mind gives you an opportunity to decide what comes into your head and what stays out. Hence, negative energy can be mitigated. To ensure a stable life, 
you must take steps to control your mind. It provides us with an opportunity to filter our mental contents without causing more problems, including feelings of guilt, excessive weight loss or weight gain, and unproductivity. Controlling your mind gives you power. You will become your mind's master when you take steps to do so. Repeatedly doing things, even mental ones, make them stick to your subconscious mind. When you keep practicing mind control, it eventually becomes part of you. So, you need not worry if your efforts will last or fade away. When controlling your mind becomes part of you, your subconscious mind naturally wades of negative feelings by causing positive distractions. Inner peace is something else that you stand to get when you have control of your mind. Knowing that you would maintain your balance and strides in any situation builds confidence and inner peace. This leads to better sleep. Although you cannot stop disruptive dreams and nightmares, you can dismiss them and resume sleep without any hassle. Individuals who think positively rarely gets agitated and avoids conflicts. With a calmer feeling, disengaging from conflicts becomes easier as you maintain the right view towards the actions of others. The benefits of controlling your mind are never ending. You will certainly find purpose in life when you do so. Making better decisions, using your time productively, and sharing joy across to other people you come in contact with. You will emit positive energies in whatever setting you find yourself. As a matter of fact, these benefits are long-lasting and deep. It is one thing to benefit from controlling your mind. A major cause of concern is the means of attaining such control. What steps do you need to take complete charge of your mind? The next part provides 10 practical steps to help you control your mind. Chapter 5. Take Charge. 10 Ways to Take Absolute Control of Your Mind. Taking charge of your mind requires time and patience, similar to any project you would like to embark on. It requires much effort to succeed. Just as a farmer plants seeds and does not walk away, leaving it all by itself through the fertilization stages, so it is with thoughts. Controlling your mind begins with your thoughts, which are like seeds planted in the mind. Nurturing your thoughts requires time, effort, and patience. As these thoughts are nurtured, it develops firm roots in your heart, embedding itself there. In time, the subconscious mind becomes influenced by the roots already established in your heart in the unconscious layer. Your interpretation of reality also depends on your ability to control your mind. Here are 10 ways to help you get absolute control of your mind. Number 1. Avoid Negative Thoughts Although it is quite impossible to get rid of negative thoughts entirely, as they will keep coming, you can control them. One way to get your mind back by controlling negative thoughts is by thinking of the worst thing that can take place. This is a counterintuitive means of controlling the mind. When you reflect on the worst case scenario and think about your chances of managing the situation, you will find yourself coming up with positive solution in most cases. This will, in effect, reduce your worries. Taking a walk is another way to vent out negative thoughts. By walking, you can come across new information that will engage your mind. Also, exercise is a good remedy for stress reduction and less worrying. Some persons have also tried to set aside time to worry about distressing issues with varying results. One thing is for certain with this approach. It ensures you maintain a high level of productivity in other engagements till you arrive at the time scheduled for worrying. Number two, optimism. According to different studies, Overly being optimistic about one's abilities helps in cultivating self-control. You have to keep reminding yourself of those moments when you successfully controlled your mind. Avoid thinking of the times you lost control of your mind. Rather, reflect on those moments it worked out. Reflecting on the successes you have achieved will spur you on to keep on trying the methods you have employed. Soon, it will be fully rooted and your mind control will function like clockwork 
Keep telling yourself you will succeed and remain positive about it. Number three, believe. You cannot change a thing if you do not believe it is possible. This will affect the manner of which you approach controlling your mind. Experts have shown that those who embrace a mindset of continual growth improve by a considerable measure when compared to those with a non-evolving mindset. So, you must ensure you maintain a positive outlook toward challenges and in the quest to take control of your mind. Number four, exaggeration. Exaggerations and overgeneralizing situations must be stopped. Overgeneralizing involves projecting a single negative experience in different situations. It also includes using such experiences in predicting the outcome of a certain event. This is a faulty reason. It is fallacious in itself because you cannot tell the exact outcome of an event based on the past. It is a means of spreading negativity through different phases in life and should be avoided. You must embark on the task of taking control of your mind. Take it upon yourself. Set realistic goals and work with them. It will be surely worth the effort. Number five, personalization. This involves taking responsibility for situations out of your control. This is a thinking trap that must be avoided. It breeds negativity and destroys confidence. Also, it strips you of your self-worth with a feeling of inadequacy. By thinking logically and carefully about situations, you will be able to avoid personalizing the blame for an occurrence. Viewing it with a balanced view and moving on to more positive thoughts. Number six, awareness and preparation. Being aware of the task at hand is the first step in getting control of your mind. It is a precursor to preparation. When you are prepared, you can summon the mental strength needed to ward off negativity. Staying aware and prepared does not mean negative thoughts will never come up. Rather, proper awareness and preparation will determine how you will react when they do. So, when you notice them come up, you knock them back out because you are prepared. Number seven, attention to reality. If you intend taking full charge of your mind, you must adopt a support system. This mental system will help you check your mindset immediately whenever something negative pops up. It does stop at instantly evaluating your mind. It recognizes the thought, erases and replaces with something in line with achieving your goal. It also redirects your focus to whatever task you are undertaking at that point in time. If you are listening to music and a narrowing thought comes in, whisper, what are you doing? It surely helps in breaking the chain of negative thoughts. Number eight, reduce your stress levels. Your body and mind are connected in deeper ways than you can imagine. When your body is physiologically stressed out, the mind can also feel stressed. People exert self-control to address stressors. Afterward, they have less self-control left to handle other issues. Hence, it is important to conserve the energy delegated for self-control by reducing stress. Abdominal breathing, involving inhaling air for a few seconds and exhaling air for over some seconds, is a relaxation technique that helps in reducing stress effectively. Focusing one's mind on soothing or calming word is another researched way of reducing stress. Number nine, create obstacles. Making it difficult for your mind to influence your behavior is a great way to control it. You can do this by ensuring that it gets what it wants in difficulty. An instance of creating an obstacle is moving your alarm clock far from your bed. Instead of hitting snooze each morning, you will be forced to move as you try to turn the device. This challenge is presented to it reduces its influence, giving you more control. Number 10. Create a reward and punish system. Rewarding a successful control process will spur you to do more. This is also applicable in failed processes. Punishing yourself for lapses in self-control will help you in the future to exert the desired restraint. 
This has been scientifically backed as persons who create both reward and punishment systems have exerted more self-control at later times. To ensure an effective reward and punishment system, hand the reward over to someone for implementation. This person might be your spouse or any other family member, workmate, schoolmate, or friend. This is also applicable to the punishment system. Chapter 6. Unlocking Your Mind Power As mentioned earlier, harnessing the power of the mind requires patience and continuous practice. Just as the farmer who sows waits through the planting season to harvest, time elapses before what is being nurtured in the mind becomes manifest. Your subconscious and unconscious mind, which takes about 92% of the entire brain, play a great role in this regard. It remains ever active both day and night, gathering pieces of information with varying degrees of usefulness. These parts of the mind provide creativity, intuition, and inspiration to different interactions in the real world. So how can you unlock the power of your mind? Number one, employ the use of visualizations. Practice makes perfect. Mastering a certain skill or habit requires lots of practice and repetition. Through repetition, the neural networks performing a specific action are strengthened. Although many persons are aware of the essence of repetition and its impact, only a fraction of them is aware that the same effect can be achieved by the visualization of the specific action to be learned. This same principle applies to harnessing the power of the mind. This is because the brain cannot differentiate between the visualization of action and performing the action itself. So, if you're going to perform a task or simply visualize it, the brain carries out the same procedures. Through visualization, you can access your mind's power. This will further help in adjusting traits, behaviors, attitudes that are undesirable. This is possible by visualizing an outcome that you desire for a specific task. With much conviction, faith, and detail, repetitively carry out a specific visualization regularly will enforce the desired outcome on the deeper layers of the mind. The subconscious and unconscious layers of your mind will accept your visualization as real-life experiences, rolling along with the laws of attraction, then gradually manifest your desired objective. Number two, focus. Focus is essential in directing all our actions in the direction of a specific outcome. An uncontrolled and irregular thinking pattern disrupts focus, hence limiting the chances of obtaining a specific result. This makes channeling all our actions to an outcome unattainable. So stop every unproductive thought from lingering about in your mind. Control it as they come. Do not give every idea an opportunity to access your mind because it comes up through your mind does not mean that it should be entertained. Your thoughts and actions can be directed on your goal by focusing on the mind's power. Recall the law of attraction. Like for like things attract. You will certainly attract what you desire when you focus. Understanding this universal law will position in a better place to harness the power of the mind. If your focus is directed to your worries and fear, you will attract similar things to yourself. When you are focused on success, happiness, joy, and other positive thoughts, you attract positivity to yourself. Remember, toxic thoughts offer no benefit and will add no value to you. Try your utmost to discard them as they come. Number three, maintain awareness in line with your thoughts. To keep in touch with the mind's power, it is necessary to keep a conscious watch over what is entertained by your thoughts. Most times, we spend a large amount of time dealing with the everyday challenges we are facing. It is naturally to neglect or pay less notice of our thoughts. This should not be the case. To gain complete control of the mind and utilize its power, we must pay attention to the thoughts that come into and leaves our minds. Observe what brings excitement to mind and what brings fear. This will help you manage your mind and further tap into its power. Number four, deal with the confirmation bias. 
The confirmation bias is the tendency for the mind to interpret a piece of information in line with an existing belief in the mind. This is a concept of the human mind that different studies have revealed to exist with the provision of ample evidence. It is very important to know about its existence as we can easily fall prey to its influence. The brain does this with a view to save energy rather than the intent of fooling or deceiving you. This is because linking information to a set of beliefs already existing in the mind is way easier than analyzing, processing, and interpreting new information. The existence of the confirmation bias simply implies that any information will be linked to a belief in its line of thought regardless of it being negative or otherwise. As earlier discussed, negative thoughts, beliefs, and feelings yield negative actions and energy. Eventually, this is bad in getting full control of the mind. If you want to take charge and harness the power of your mind, it is imperative that you overcome this mental process understood as the confirmation bias. Overcoming this bias will put you in a pivotal position in controlling your mind. Number five, break free from self-limiting beliefs. Thoughts contributing to self-doubt should have no room in your mind if you are to harness its power. Such self-limiting thoughts can be identified through thinking patterns. They might have been picked up at different stages in life and have been suppressed in the unconscious section of the mind. These thoughts make us doubt our abilities, hence limiting our achievement. Usually, we have no conscious idea of this process and simply accept it as part of our capabilities. To break free from limiting thoughts and ideas, identify the root of such thought in the first place. When you know where it stems from, you will be able to define its legitimacy. Most times, we will discover that such beliefs are wrong and are not based on facts. They are simply figments of our imaginations playing a trick on our mind and restricting our potentials. Number six, flush out negative thoughts. There are toxic thoughts everywhere. We all experience them every now and then. Our progress and achievement are at huge risk with them lurking around. Thoughts that give no benefit must be dealt with. They must be trashed and flushed out of the system as they are toxic and harmful. If they are left to dwell in the mind continually, they will be fully ingrained, proving very influential, hence controlling the mind. Negative thoughts are certain to hinder your progress. They will prevent you from harnessing the power of your mind. When you identify them, Weed them out. The next outlined step is what should be done next. 7. Inject positive thoughts. The mind must be occupied. When idle, it is easy for different streams of thoughts to occupy it, either negative or positive. Also, if it is not occupied after uprooting thoughts that are not beneficial, it becomes easy for such a line of thinking to reoccur. So it is important that you fill your mind with positive thoughts. Positive thoughts are supportive beliefs that propel you to reach your full potential. They are not inborn. Rather, they are introduced into the mind. To erase those negative beliefs entirely, we must continually challenge our belief system. Such periodic evaluation will help us reassess what we stand for and highlight ideas that offer no benefits whatsoever. The mind becomes gradually restructured with the planting of positive thoughts Although it won't come easy, it eventually leads to a better life. Number eight, watch out for those habits. The unconscious mind, as previously discussed, is largely responsible for habits and influencing behavioral-like patterns. This helps the brain utilize its power resources effectively. Once the brain allows the mind to carry out its routine, it becomes easy for negative habits and traits to be exhibited. When that eventually occurs, uprooting it becomes very difficult. Removal of negative habits from the unconscious and subconscious levels of the mind becomes imperative if you are to harness the mind's power. What will you do? Chapter 7. Controlling Your Feelings Gustav Flaubert once inferred that one can be a master over what he is doing, but not over his feeling. True, 
to those words, our feelings cannot be mastered, but we can learn to regulate them. Why should our feelings be regulated? Is there any use for doing so? And what role does the mind play in controlling your feelings? These questions will be comprehensively answered in this section. Our feelings are expressions of our emotional and mental state of existence. Normally, tied to our physical and social sensory feeling, they are used to react to joy, fear, love, disgust, sadness, hate, pleasure, and a host of other emotions. In other to prevent extreme behaviors which usually come at high costs. We must control and suppress some emotions and feelings. Persons who cannot generally control their feelings engage in unwarranted acts of violence, fighting, unprotected sex, and abuse of different substances which will undoubtedly put their lives at risk. There is a wide range of factors that contributes to such lack of control apart from the feelings generated by the mind. These factors include environmental, genetically, social, and biological factors. Managing your emotions can be likened to developing a skill. It involves learning a better way of doing something. It requires change on our part. In reality, we struggle to accept change as humans. This is largely due to many factors, but the working of the mind is highly influential in this regard, as we have discussed earlier in Part 1 of this book. Controlling your feelings will get you mentally stronger. The good thing is, everyone can benefit from controlling their feelings. Here is why you should keep your feelings in check. Keeping your feelings in check, is there any use? It is very easy to avoid taking the risk due to fear or make an outburst in anger that we later regretted. This happens when we let our feelings slip unchecked. The mind is powerful. So it is with emotions, hence feelings. Our moods influence our reactions to situations happening around us. Is it the way we reply questions thrown at us, spend money, or deal with challenges? Our emotions at the time will determine the outcome of these events. Persons who have no control over their feelings engage in impulsive use of substances, uncontrolled sex, intense anger, shoplifting, and illegal driving. These persons also lack self-esteem, experience mood swings, feel insecure, cannot set and attain goals, exhibit tendencies to commit suicide, and can barely manage personal relationships. Keeping your feelings in check is not the same thing as managing them. Ignoring how you feel about certain situation will not make these feelings go away. Rather, such feelings will get worse when they are not addressed properly with time. Also, there is a likelihood of turning to coping skills that are unhealthy for support. These include the abuse of drugs and alcohol. Experts are of the opinion that medical attention is needed to help persons who cannot keep their feelings in check to regain control. Needless to mention, emotions or feelings are vital in other to fully live one's life. Here are some ways that can help you to get better control of your mood. Number one, acknowledgement. The first step required in keeping your feelings in check is to acknowledge your present mood. You have to be certain of how you really feel inside at the time. Also, take note that emotions as anger mask vulnerable emotions such as embarrassment or shame. Your emotions 